Are you drowning in debt and you feel like you're never going to get out of it? Or maybe all you think about is your debt. It's like it consumes your thoughts over and over and over. It's all you think about. I know how you feel. I felt the same way before. And what I found on how to break out of all this, I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. My name is Joe Mavo with Master Life by Design. And today's video is how to get out of debt fast once and for all. But before we jump in, I just want to give a quick shout out to Angry Inferno. He subscribed to our channel between now and our last video. And if you want to be shout, have a shout out on here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments. Say, hey, I subscribe because I want to give you a shout out when you subscribe. I want you to kind of get on this YouTube famous game, I guess, right here. So anyway, with that, if you feel like you like this video, like it, gives it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe and share it with someone that you know you need to share it with if they need to hear this video video and all the content within it. So with that, let's jump in. I told you guys I know how it feels to be drowning in debt. I remember I was $40,000 in credit card debt almost. I had, you know, car loans, I had personal loans. I was just drowning in debt. I remember it was over a decade ago. Actually, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I, I partied my butt off that summer. I got started in network marketing. I was just spending money. I would just swipe the card. Have you ever been there? Like you just swiped a card, like $200 pair of jeans. Cool, got it. You know, hey, going out to dinner with friends. Cool, got it. First round of drinks on me. Cool, got it. And next thing you know, I'm like 40 grand in debt. And so I didn't do this just once. I didn't do it just twice. I did it three times. I was in this type of debt three times and so I like to think I'm an overachiever. I don't do it once or twice. I got to do it three times, right? So <clears throat> I remember as I kind of had my aha moment on this third time, I remember as I shared in my videos, I lived with six other people, coldest room in the winter, hottest in the summer. I was barely getting by. At one point, I had hardly any income living in San Diego. I was eating cheese and ketchup sandwiches to su survive. And I remember I would always just swipe the card and I would just think to myself, you know what, I'll pay for this later. I'll pay for this later. Or, you know what, hey, I deserve this. Or hey, I haven't done this in a while. I, sh I should be able to do it. And I just kept swiping the card, right? And I should actually make a video <clears throat> or I have an old video, I should actually put it on this YouTube channel of how I had plastic surgery when I got out of credit card debt. So it was actually pretty cool. Maybe uh, maybe I'll share that with you guys one day. But with that being said, I remember I would just drown in debt and then I was trying to get, figure out how am I gonna get out of it? I have, hardly have any money coming in. Have you ever felt that way before? Or it's just like you don't make enough but you have so much to pay. It's just like it's gonna take you to you know 2030 to get out of it. I know how that feels. I was crushed inside. I would have to delay gratification. I would have to not go out with my friends and say no, and it was painful. But then I started paying off things, and one thing would be paid off, and I felt really good about it. I started to see my balance go down. I felt great about it. And then all of a sudden, something came and hit me, like the car would break down, and you know, transmission went out, and $1,500 later, you know, I'm back in debt. And I'm just like, oh, I just felt like it was this never ending cycle. So how do you get out of it once and for all? I'm gonna share with you my best strategies, but first, we gotta work on the psychology, right? Tony Robbins talks about how everything is 80% psychology, 20% strategy. And the reason why I was in debt 30 to $40,000 debt three times is because my psychology never changed in between the first to the second and the second and the third. But from third on, I changed the way I thought about my money and about the beliefs that I had around money and what got me into debt. So if you're gonna make this once and for all change, you gotta change the way you think. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep doing the same thing over and over and over. So after coaching thousands of people and doing well over 17,000 coaching calls, I started noticing patterns that people had in their psychology that got them into debt, especially around credit cards. But I just wanna talk about debt in general. So I got a couple beliefs here. There's four of them that really stick out above the rest for, uh, for all my clients. And even as I looked into what were my beliefs, these played a major role and get me into debt. So the first one is, I'll pay for it later. How many of you have ever said, I'll pay for it later, right? And all of a sudden you're like, swipe, or you just, you know, you just grab and go, or whatever it might be. Put it on, you know, I don't know if there's store credit or whatnot. Some places do do that, right? <clears throat> but I'll pay it off later. That's the first one that gets people in the debt. So if you're gonna have that belief, I'll pay for it later, it's just everything racks up, racks up, racks up, and since you don't really, most people don't check their balances every day or even a week, maybe even monthly they do it, it can start to add up. 
So instead of having, I'll pay for it later, the belief that I'd like you to adopt or I invite you to adopt is if I don't have the money for it, I'll wait. If I don't have the money for it, I'll wait, right? Because if you can have that belief, it's still, right? Oh, I don't have the money. <clears throat> you get, And you might say, well, with a credit card, you could swipe and say you have the money, but you don't. But in reality, you know you're gonna have to pay for it. So if you don't have the money, I'll wait. That belief got me out of debt so quickly. I needed, I remember my snowboard was getting old and I wanted a new snowboard and my buddies were getting new snowboards and I just felt like, oh, I can, I can get it. I can just swipe the cart. But I remember it said, if I don't have the money, I'll wait. And I waited and I honestly, I waited three more years before I even got another snowboard. And so all of a sudden, I didn't go into debt, I was paying debt off. That was huge. The second one is, the second belief that gets people into debt is it's only blank amount. It's only 20 bucks, it's only $5, it's only 300 a box, right? That belief that it's only gets you into so much trouble. It justifies, logically, you try to justify, right? We justify with logic. So you try to justify the price point on it. Right, it's only five bucks. Right, well, five bucks times five days a week times you know um, you know four weeks in a month and twelve in a year. All of a sudden, that adds up. Right, so instead, the new belief is: is this a need or is this a want? <clears throat> See, my wife and I, whenever we go out, especially her, she's so good at this. She always asks herself: is this a need or a want? She'll text me a picture. She'll say, "Hey, babe, is this is this a good? You know, what do you think about this for the house?" And I'll say, you know, is this a need or a want? Or she'll text a picture and says, I really like this, but is this a need or is it a want? I think it's a want and we won't buy it. Right? When you have that belief, is it a need or a want? You can have that conscious awareness. All of a sudden, you don't indulge in it, right? Because it brings you out of getting sucked into that want that you have. And you start to be like, I don't really need it. I don't want to go into debt. So that's the second one. The third one is, let's hear it. I deserve it, right? <clears throat> I deserve it. I haven't had this in forever. Well, great. You deserve it based on what? Right? Everyone says they deserve it. Whether it's they're feeling like crap or they're feeling good, they'll justify saying they deserve it for whatever reason. The belief that I'd like you to adopt or I invite you to adopt is I deserve it when I hit this financial goal and clearly define that goal. I'll hit it, I deserve it when I hit this financial goal. Because when you set those targets, now you're saying, okay, that $200 pair of jeans, why you buy them, I don't know. But if you did, you might say, hey, when I have all my bills paid off and I have $2,000 in the bank, I will then go ahead and buy this, right? When you justify it, because what I used to do is I buy $200 pair of jeans and you know $50 shirts and next thing you know, $400, $500 later, I swiped a card and I'm good because I had the belief, I'll just pay for it later. But it wasn't until I started looking at what my belief systems around this and I started to shift. And I said, and I was in network marketing at the time, and I said, I will deserve this when I hit this rank in business, in network marketing, and I was in Amway, right? And so I, when I hit this rank in Amway, I'll, I deserve that, right? And so it gave me something to move forward to. Doesn't mean no. Here's what I want you guys to see. Adopting that belief doesn't say no, because when we have things that we have to say no to, it kind of irks us, right? It's like, oh, I want it, you know, don't tell me I can't have no. But it doesn't mean no. What it means is yes, you can when you hit this goal. So it's yes, but when. And all of a sudden you're excited about going after that goal and going after and hit it. Last one is, I just want blank. I want these pants, I want this coffee, I want this car, I want this, right? And let's be honest, in those moments, we have this strong emotional desire, but even if you get it, right, that causes you to go in debt, what happens? After about a week, two, maybe three weeks, it's kind of you're just used to it, right? You're familiar with it. And so it's not as exciting. And so we go get something else that you want to make you feel excited. Remember, everything you buy is for a feeling. You wanna buy because of that feeling, not because you want this you know, car or these pair of pants. So the belief I'd like you to adopt is, I'll get it when I can afford it in full. Instead of saying, I want this, and so I'm just gonna buy it and I'll swipe it, it's, I, I, excuse me, I'll get it when I can afford it in full. So that doesn't mean that you have $50 out of the $200 pair of jeans. It means that you have the $200 
out of the $200. So it's really important for you guys to adopt these new beliefs so that you can start changing the way you think about things because the only reason why you buy things is the way you think about them. And when you think about them in a way of I want, I deserve, I should have, it's only, right? All of those things cause you to buy in the moment, those beliefs. But these new beliefs, when adopted, will start to have you step out of it and start to say, do you really need this? Do you really, is this really important now? Do you have the money for it? And when you start to break free from those old thoughts into the and step into these new thoughts, all of a sudden, the swiping stops, the signing stops, and you don't go into that, you start getting out of that. The second component is you have to change what you focus on. This is a big one because focus determines how you feel. If you focus on how bad you want that car, how bad you want those clothes, how bad you want that Apple watch, right? If you focus on how bad you want it, you're going to get emotionally stirred up and you're going to feel like, oh, I deserve it. I need it. I want it, right? All those limiting beliefs. Versus if you focus on will this get me closer to my financial goals and targets, or will this get me out of debt or out of the red, right? So we gotta start to look at what do you focus on? Most people, what they're focused on is their debt. This is why they never get out of it, right? It's like as if you were focusing on uh, driving your car looking through the back window. If you focus that way, what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna get into an accident, right? But if you focus on where you're going, all of a sudden, you're gonna have a way better chance of getting to your destination. Most people are focused on debt. What you wanna focus on is the third thing, and that is we want you to focus on making more money. You have to focus on how do you make more money? So some of you might sit there and be like, Joe, I have a nine to five. I, you know, I don't know if I can make more money. They're not giving overtime. You know, I can't you know, go to a higher position right now. They're not doing that. Well, maybe you need to drive Uber. Maybe you need to rent out one of the rooms in your house on Airbnb. Maybe you need to go do yard work. Maybe you gotta do, you know, move, help someone move, right? There's a ton of ways out there nowadays to make more money. You can make a YouTube channel, right? And start, you know, sharing your passion with people and make more money. But you gotta out earn the problem. I always heard in network marketing, you don't focus on the debt because what you focus, you get more of. And so I used to focus on the debt and all of a sudden, transmission would go out, bam, 1500 bucks, right? I would just go more into debt. But when I focus on, okay, I'm going over here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna focus on making more money. I'm gonna out earn the problem. When I did that, all of a sudden the game changed. And I started getting opportunities opening up. I started doing more, I started creating more. People wanted to pay me more. I mean, all of a sudden when you focus on that, the game changes. So look at how can you out earn the problem versus how can you reduce the debt? I work with too many people. What they do is they try to minimize their lifestyle instead of focusing on how do I create more abundance in my life? Because I used to do that. For years, I focused on how do I minimize my bills? How do I minimize my lifestyle? And that can work in the short term, but if that's your long-term strategy, you're doomed for failure because prices will continue to rise. And things will happen. Things come up in your life. We all know we all have problems and challenges. You have them. I have them. Everyone has them, right? So you got to focus on how do you create more abundance so that any problem that comes up, it's no big deal. You can pay it off. All right, so that's enough of the psychology. I want you guys to really work on that because that's what truly got me out of going into debt for the fourth or fifth or sixth time is I changed my psychology, my thoughts, my mindset. I started being money, I had this, I worked on my money mindset, right? What I did with my money. And you might sit there and be like, well, Joe, money's not everything. You're right. But if you can't get your money right in your head, you're not gonna get it out, you're not gonna get it right in the external world with the things and therefore, when people need your help, when you want to bless others, you can't. When you want to go somewhere, you can't. When you really want to be able to do these things that you want to do with your friends, you can't. And so all of a sudden, life doesn't get abundant. It gets constricted. It's not fun anymore. Life's meant to have fun. Get your money game, your money head right, and then go out there and spend your money wisely. Get ahead. Focus on creating abundance by adding value out in the world. And all of a sudden, now the game changes. Now the world opens up. Now you can bless more people. All right, so like I said, let's jump into some of the strategies. So the first strategy, we're gonna go quick on these. Number one is you might have multiple credit cards or loans and all that. You wanna start to look at which one has the highest interest 
and you wanna start paying that off because in the big picture, right? When you look at the big picture, you're gonna say, I'm spending so much money in interest that if I knock that out first, all of a sudden in the big picture, I'm gonna pay less money, right? And that's one thing that I started with was I started looking at which credit card did I have that was the highest interest. And I had Bank of America at the time and it had a 24.99% interest. So I started paying that bad boy off first. And when I did, I celebrated because I think the next one was like a 14.99%. So I was saving about 10% each month just by doing that, okay? The next strategy is you may, depending on you, you may want to say, okay, which one has the smallest balance? And let me work on paying that one off first. Because why do you do that? Why would someone do that? Even though there's higher interest, as we just said, pay off the higher interest ones. Well, because sometimes people need a win. They've been drowning in debt for so long that they need a win. Maybe you have $600 on your cell phone bill, <clears throat> you know, that, from buying a cell phone, the, new, the newest and latest iPhone that you wanted. You didn't need it, but you wanted it, right? And so you went and you bought it, and all of a sudden it's $600 sitting there, and you're like, let me pay that off first. I just wanna have a win, like the victory. Let's chalk one up in the win column, right? So that's the second one. The next one is, I like to kind of combine these, is as you're paying your monthly balance, you pay off either the smallest amount first, or you might pay off the highest interest one. But whatever ones you pay off, you now take that monthly payment, and even though it's done, say you were paying $100 on that phone a month, you once it's paid off, the $600 is done, you take that 100 and you put it on top of other bills to pay the other bills down faster, the second credit card or the second loan quicker. From there, once you pay off that, you take that payment and the first payment and you take that and put it on the third payment and you start stacking them. So that's the next strategy I love to use. I didn't really need to use it too, too much. I did use it, but not a lot because I really only had one. And so you gotta figure out what's best for you, but I highly recommend continuing to make the same amount of payments, just pay them over a longer period of time. The second, or the next one is, you may wanna look at, depending on how your debt to income ratio, your credit score, all that, <clears throat> you may want to consolidate your debt. Instead of paying $200 here, $300 there, $100 here, $60 there, you may wanna try and consolidate the debt. What I mean by that is you take all those payments and you go get a loan for the total amount for all of them, and now you only pay one loan, one interest rate. I was looking at here, um, I was reading, and it said the average annual percentage rate on debt consolidation loan is around 18.56%. Um, to put it in perspective, the average range of interest rates charged on debt consolidation loans typically falls between 8.31% and 28.81%. <clears throat> so you're, there's a range depending on your credit, the amount you have, etc. cetera. You're, you may want to look into consolidating your debt so that you don't have one payment. And sometimes it's a lot lower in interest than what you were paying before. So your monthly payment goes down. But again, as we just talked about, if you were paying $500 a month in all these separate areas total, and now your payment's 300, continue to pay 500 just on this loan, one loan. That's gonna help you drastically get out of debt quickly. So with that being said, and that also helps your debt to income ratio if you're trying to qualify for a home or a car, you know, in case something happened or whatnot. <clears throat> so the last strategy, and this is my best strategy. I have it when clients join me for coaching. They're like, oh, you know, I can't afford it, which is just BS. But what I really say is it's not that they can't afford it because they think of it as debt, you know, versus an investment. Investment and debt is different. We're, we'll go into that in a different video. But right now, this is how I used it to, this strategy I actually used when I got out of the credit card debt, uh, when I bought my wife's ring, when we got engaged, how I, uh, we even did a little bit on our wedding at the time. And the best strategy that I love, and it doesn't work for everyone, but it does work for a lot of people, and that is <clears throat> what you do is you take your credit card, you pay everything on your credit card, right? From there, you go and you open up a new credit card. Now, with that, I always look for ones that have a 0% balance transfer for 90, 180 days, sometimes even a year, I think I've seen up to. And zero, or 
no, no, I'm sorry. A 0% transfer up to 90 days. That's it. And up to 90 days and a zero APR for a year, sometimes even two years, which means zero APR, no interest for a year or two years, whatever the term is. But also the balance transfer, the 0%. Because typically a balance transfer is 3%, right? You pay, if you move 10 grand, you're gonna get charged 3% on that, right? So what you wanna do is get one with a 0% balance transfer for this first 90 days. So say you invested in coaching, you paid 10 grand in coaching, and you put it on your credit card, you go get a new credit card, you do a balance transfer for zero APR for two years, you also have 0% transfer, a balance transfer fee, which means you pay no money transferring it, right? And then all of a sudden you just pay those monthly, uh, monthly payments on that zero APR for the next two years. Well, guess what? I took it a step further. I would do that. <clears throat> and at the end of the two years, I wasn't done. I still had debt. Say I had 10 grand of debt. And by the end of the two years, I was down to 7,500. Well, guess what I did? I went and did a balance transfer again. And all of a sudden, I had two more years, no interest. And then maybe I got it down to 4,000. Then from there, I'll take another two years and I'll pay it off that year, right? As my income went up and I was adding more value. Balance transfers can be a great way. The challenge is you gotta be able to qualify for your debt to income ratio, right? It plays a role. So you may wanna look into that, see about doing that. I have clients that wanna get started in coaching in that investment, not that they use that strategy to be able to do that because we usually help them make way more money and go to that next level and then they just pay it all off right there. So, and then if, and I know I didn't talk about businesses because that's a little bit different, but I'm talking about people with their personal lives because right now I coach a lot of six, seven, eight figure entrepreneurs and all their debt is, is just more zeros. Really? You might think like, oh, these guys can make so much money, but if they're making a million a year but spending $2 million a year, guess what? They're broke on a higher level. They're in debt at a higher level. That's it, they just add more zeros. And so these strategies can work just the same for people at any economic level, right? It's just some, in some ways we can be able to, when we're making more, we can get out a lot quicker. That's why I always encourage you to find ways to create a side hustle, more money, create a business, start a YouTube channel, start a, you know, plant your flag in something master and get paid accordingly, knowing your worth. Do something to increase your income. Not because you're money hungry, but because A, you can add value to the world, but B, you can give a better quality of life for yourself and those in your family and loved ones and those around you. You can bless more people that way. So with that, we went over, you know, hey, here's some great strategies to get you out of debt, but what's gonna get you out once and for all is the way that you think about money, the way you, what you believe in those processes, in those moments, those the opportunities to grow, because let's be honest, we all think, oh man, I really want that, I'm really excited, or, you know, hey, it's only for a limited time, be careful of that one, limited sale, right? Like, hold off, there's always more sales, right? There's always, always more sales. But we went over how do you, you gotta change your belief systems in between your head in order not to go in debt. And then you got some strategies on how to get out of debt. So when you put those two together, when you marry those two, the world becomes, you know, you're in control of your world. The world becomes your, uh, your bitch, right? <laughs> because you're not, the world's not in control of you, you are in control of the world. And so you start doing this, the game changes. That's how I went from $40,000 in debt to when I got out of debt, I kept those same principles, same mindset. And that's what helped me get to $40,000 in the bank and six figures and beyond is because I changed the way I thought about money. I worked on my internal money game and not just the strategy. You can, what, you can do a strategy all you want, but if you keep swiping because of those li limited beliefs, you're just gonna go back into it, just like I did the first two times. So with that, if you guys found value in this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Go ahead and subscribe. We're doing three videos a week. Yes, three videos a week in areas of business, finance, relationship, and personal development. And if you feel like, hey, you know what? I gotta work on these beliefs. I'm, I feel like I'm stuck. I, I just can't break free. I, I just continue to do the same old things that I'm in debt, but I'm willing to pay whatever it takes 
and invest whatever it takes to get out of it, go ahead and fill out the application down below in the, co in the description. Fill out that one-on-one -on -one application so we can talk with you. You can work with my wife, my myself, one of our coaches, so that you can break free and you can go from having $40,000 in debt to having over $40,000 in the bank. That's what we want for you. You want to master your finances. Once you master your finances, that's how you master life by design. You create the life you want and you're in control and not life being in control of you. So with that, thanks for tuning in, guys. Joe Mafu, Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See ya.